In this video, we take a look at some of the new changes and features in the initial iOS 16.2 beta. And let me tell you folks, it is a doozy. There are tons of new changes and features. If you appreciate videos like this, leave a thumbs up so others know it's legit and hit that subscribe. Okay, so here is the first iOS 16.2 beta, as you can see there. So the first thing you're gonna notice is a larger version number when you go into settings and uh, general and software update, you're gonna see that version number is a little bit larger than it used to be. Uh, so that is a new change here in 16.2. Uh, as far as build number is concerned, you have 20C5032E for those keeping score at home. And speaking of home, the home app gets a new update, but you also notice here, I have a home key prompt because I have the new level lock plus in the house and I'm reviewing this. That should be live soon on the channel. Be sure to subscribe for more. But in 16.2, home gets an underlying architecture upgrade. You notice sometimes you have those accessories not responding, but this change includes updates that enable faster, more reliable communication with HomeKit accessories. Now, the downside is that your iPad will no longer function as a HomeKit hub. So if you're using your iPad instead of a, a HomePod or an Apple TV, keep that in mind. But I still need to update my HomePod software, so we'll come back to that at the end of the video. Stay tuned. Siri gets some love in 16.2 with a new prefers silent Siri responses option. If you go to Siri settings, you'll notice here under spoken responses, you can prefer not only spoken responses now, but silent responses, which is a new feature. Siri will respond silently except when you appear to be driving or using headphones with the screen off. Now, my experience with this has been a little bit of a mixed bag here on this initial beta, but the, I guess the, the point of this is to basically make it so that Siri stays silent even when you have the silent switch disabled. Now, you can also turn off hide IP address via shortcut. So if you go to settings iCloud and you go down to iCloud Plus and enable private relay, your IP address and browsing activity in Safari will be hidden from websites. But in 16.2, you'll notice a new feature. If you tap the website settings button, you'll see the ability to turn off hide IP address on a one-off basis. So when I tap that, you'll see here, Safari is using iCloud Private Relay to hide your IP address. By continuing, the parties at hand will be able to see your IP address until you reload this tab or go to another website. So disabled just like that. Now, when I tap the button again, now I can turn hide IP address back on, basically re-enabling private relay, or I can simply just reload the page to disable it as well. So this can be a very handy feature if you're encountering issues where the website isn't presenting itself like it normally does because it doesn't know your IP address or doesn't know your location. Well, you can turn this off on a site-by-site, case-by-case basis. In the music app, it's a small change, but you'll notice an updated lossless button. So on the left side is iOS 16.1, I believe. And on the right side, you have iOS 16.2. You can see the button, just the design of it is a little different, but the functionality stays the same. You can still tap it and that gives you the bit rate and more information. You can also tap the audio quality to jump right to the settings. Now with crash detection being a thing, uh, we've heard that sometimes emergency SOS is accidentally triggered. Well, now apparently you can report uh, when emergency SOS has a false positive. So iDevice help on Twitter via 9to5Mac uh, posted this screenshot of a report option for unintentional SOS calls. So now you'll be able to report to Apple if you intentionally or accidentally triggered emergency SOS on your iPhone. Another feature that those who are looking for a better night's sleep will appreciate are the new lock screen sleep widgets. So if you go to your lock screen, you edit, you can add that new sleep widget. You'll find data and schedule so you can see how you slept and review your sleep schedule. Two little widgets there, small one and a medium. And you also have a sleep widget to view your most recent sleep session, including sleep stages, so small and medium there as well. Now here's something, in my opinion, one of the coolest new features in 16.2. In the Shortcuts app, you'll find new actions for setting your lock screen wallpaper. Now, in previous versions of iOS, there of course was a set wallpaper action, but it was designed with just that one wallpaper because you only have one lock screen. Well, in 16.2, things have been significantly updated uh, to accommodate the new lock screen architecture. So here it is, the previous version of iOS, you see just set wallpaper, so you could set your lock screen or home screen wallpaper uh, to an image and use shortcuts to do all sorts of really cool stuff. But here in 16.2, there are three different actions for setting wallpaper. So 
You have Git wallpaper, you have set wallpaper photo, you have switch between wallpapers. So Git wallpaper gets all the lock screen wallpapers and returns them. Um, so you can go in there and see that. You can select Git all, or you can just get the current as well. So that's kind of a cool little option to have. And then you'll see the set wallpaper photo, and this is what is most close to what we already had in previous versions of iOS. So set default wallpaper to image for lock screen and home screen. So here it is on the previous version. You can see set lock screen and home screen wallpaper to image. But here's the really cool action, switch between wallpapers. So this is actually really neat. So you tap that, you select wallpaper, and now you can go in there and see all the available wallpapers that you have configured on your particular device. And that's just really cool to have that option. So needless to say, 16.2 is looking pretty awesome for those that like to change up their wallpaper using shortcuts. Now this feature isn't limited to 16.2, but now there are ads on individual app store pages. Whereas before you had the search ads at the top, right? But now when you go into an actual app store page, you scroll down, you'll see under, you might like an advertisement. And previously there were even like gambling apps and stuff like this, and there was an outrage and Apple removed those particular types of ads. But what do you think about having ads on actual app store pages? Let me know. Another new feature coming to 16.2, but it's not yet live, is the ability to have more frequent updates for live activities. So this feature will allow more frequent updates, let you see more real-time information, but the downside is that it will, of course, drain your battery faster. So this will be an opt-in feature once it goes live. And in 16.2, Apple has re-enabled its TV app live activities follow feature, which lets you follow in progress sporting events like baseball games. All you need to do is tap the little follow button and you can do so. Now, once you do, you'll see the game in the dynamic island on your iPhone 14 Pro and you can long press to expand that. And you'll also see the live activity on the lock screen for all devices. And in 16.2, the Freeform app, which I think everyone sort of forgot about. This is actually announced back at WWDC. And this app is sort of like a notes app on steroids. That's sort of the best way I can describe it. But it's like the notes app and the iWork suite combined to make this collaborative sort of workspace, like a whiteboard that you can pretty much do anything on. Like there's no limit as far as the size of these boards. There's all sorts of different shapes and things you can add to the boards. Uh, it's collaborative, of course. It can basically work like a workspace to share ideas, but that sort of comes with the name Freeform. So it can be basically whatever you want it to be uh, from a collaborative standpoint, or if you're just using it independently, you can do so as well. If you like to use it as like a supercharged notes app, that's possible too. Now, one thing you'll notice is that you cannot delete these uh, boards initially because you have to make sure that your iCloud syncing is enabled for Freeform and it's not by default. So you wanna go into your iCloud settings, go ahead and turn on Freeform, and there that will allow you to now delete those boards just like that. Now in iPad OS 16.1, Stage Manager was enabled, but it lacked external display support. As you can see here, you just have basically mirroring of the Stage Manager interface. But in 16.2, with M1 and M2 iPads, you now have Stage Manager with an external display support. So this is a much, much better user experience here. Even though Stage Manager is still sort of a mess, uh, I definitely appreciate having true external display support where you can have like a full screen interface here on this 6K Pro Display XDR and of course have multiple apps side by side. I have a whole lot to talk about Stage Manager. If you want more on that, let me know down below. Now, full circle here, we're back to the home upgrade. So we got all of our ducks in a row on the back end. So we'll just tap learn more. And now we can actually go ahead with the upgrade to take advantage of improved performance and reliability. So we're gonna continue. Now it says HomePod software update required. So of course you need to be running 16.2 on your HomePods as well. Once you are, you can tap continue. Cannot upgrade because you need to be on Wi-Fi. So let's go ahead and enable Wi-Fi. And now I think we're actually gonna be able to do this thing. So tap continue. And then you're gonna get a warning message. Some of your devices require a software update. So basically what this is saying is that the devices that haven't been updated will not be able to interact or control your home at all. So that's something you definitely wanna consider. And also users, other users in your household, 
uh, that have devices that haven't updated, they're not gonna be able to either. So you can just tap upgrade anyway. So there's a lot of warnings there that Apple's giving you, but once you proceed with the upgrade, there's really kind of no going back on that uh, as far as I am aware. And then once you do that upgrade, it'll take a few seconds and there it is. Home upgrade complete. The accessories in my home can now take advantage of improved performance and reliability. Uh, that still remains to be seen, but hopefully as time goes on, that will prove to be true. Although that's not very promising right there. 15 accessories, no response. Well, you know, typical home kit stuff. Uh, but again, with matter support and everything on the horizon or already launched technically, things should get better. Now, finally, we'll talk about the weather app with Apple News integration. So like the Stocks app, you now have Apple News integration in the weather app for areas where there are relevant weather-related news items. You'll see those right within the weather app to link directly to news. I think this will be rolling out in more places in the future, but right now it appears to only be in a handful of places. But I think this is definitely a nice to have. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a hands-on look at iOS 16.2 changes and features. There's a lot new here. Let me know down below what are your favorite new features and changes. And also if you appreciate videos like this, leave a thumbs up, it helps others know it's legit and hit that subscribe button for more. This is Jeff with Cellular.